Okay, welcome everybody. We're so grateful and glad that you're able to join us for a little while this evening. And we're very excited um, to welcome our guest, Amy Haley, in just a few moments. Um, Amy has been a wonderful friend to your Parent Resource Center, where I work as a special education coordinator. My name is Kathleen Donovan, and I'm very glad to be joined tonight with my colleagues, um, Gina DeSalvo and Emma Peral. Emma, I'm not sure, maybe we, if you want to greet folks in Spanish and just let them know that we will have the recording available. Sure. <laughs> Buenas noches y bienvenidos esta noche y solamente les queremos decir que vamos a, a grabar la, la presentación y si tienen alguna pregunta, por favor pongan su mensaje en el chat o comuníquense con el Centro de Recursos para Padres de Familia. Gracias. Ok, Kathleen. Thank you, Emma. And I think our colleague Gina is going to tell you a little bit about how the Parent Resource Center collaborates with families. So we'll just get to the next slide here. There we go. Okay, Gina, all yours. All right, great. Thanks so much, Kathleen. Um, we're so excited to be here tonight, and um, you know we're we're able to offer this session um, due to you know some of the things that we we offer in our office. Um, so I'll talk about that in a minute. But first of all, what is the Parent Resource Center? Uh, the Parent Resource Center is a space and a program, and our job is to provide information and to and supports to you, the parents or guardians. Um, mostly of those uh, with disabilities as they work through um, meeting their child's needs with school staff and um, figuring out how to, to give your family resources. So what do we do specifically? Uh, we do individual consultations that are confidential. You can sign up for those consultations on our website. Um, and I, I think Kathleen will link that information in the chat. Um, we offer school and community connections. So we have plenty of resources for your local community, um, some state resources, even national resources. Just give us a call, let us know what's going on, and we'll try to match up some great resources for you. Um, tonight is example an example of a parent and staff learning opportunity, and we're so glad to have Ms. Haley here tonight. And finally, we have a lending library. Um, you know, we we have worked really hard to have up to date information on a variety of disabilities and topics, and uh, we have lots of resources and tools for you to download digitally or listen to um, as an audio book or just check out a, a book the old fashioned way. So we're so excited to be here tonight. Um, on Mondays, Kathleen uh, sends out an awesome Monday message with all the information that you need for the week, all of the events. Um, themed information if we have a particular disability awareness month some resources so make sure if you are not receiving those messages please follow that qr code and sign up for it and you'll you'll get a lot of really rich information on mondays Great. Thanks so much, Gina. Okay, I think without any further ado, we are very grateful that um, Ms. Haley agreed to join us twice today, both at lunchtime for a lunchtime session and this evening. And Gina and I and Emma were very excited to hear about all the great resources available through our wonderful library services. And um, we thank you, Amy, for joining us tonight. Thank you for providing this opportunity and thank you families for joining. I um, appreciate the opportunity opportunity to spend some time with you. So I am going to share my screen. Um, so before I do that, I will talk a little bit about who I am. So I am the supervisor for library services. I was an elementary school librarian for about 10 years, and I was a middle school librarian for seven years before coming into this position. So I have helped many students um, find books and it brings me joy to see them hugging their book and skipping out of the library. Um, I also have two children who are APS um, students. I have an eighth grader and a senior. So it's helpful for me to kind of keep in the know with what students are um, talking about and what's current and they can help me troubleshoot uh, sometimes with technology at home as well if there is something that comes up that I need a little help with. So I'm grateful to be the supervisor of library services and to spend a little bit of time with you. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Okay, and so the page that you see that I've landed on is the um, My Access page. 
My Access is a resource that we have that where um, our the resources that we use are kept here. So um, the library services resources kind of live in two places. One is Canvas and the other one is Mac and Via. So students, primary students are the um, most frequent users of Mac and Via. Um, they can also use Canvas, but I'll open that. So um, students would open My Access and then go into um, Mac and Via. And Mac and Via has um, eBooks and audiobooks, and we also have databases in here. So if we click on databases, then you um, can see all of the databases that we have. I belong to the District Resource Center site, so that's why I have all of the databases, but I know that there are families in here from pre-K up to um, high school, so I'll show you how those resources are um, sorted out a little bit. If, you're, um, if your student is a high school student, then they'll have access to everything. If your student um, is at a different grade level, then the name of their school would be in this top corner, and then they would have access to a few um, less resources based on their grade level. So if we scroll down, we can see all that the high school students would have. So this is the District Resource Center uh, Mac, and, Mac and Via resource. Um, if I go back into my access, I'm going to go to Canvas. And Amy, while you're pulling that up, we ha we do have a question in the chat about mm -hmm. how to maybe get to maybe to my access. Is that? That's a good question. So um, the students have my access automatically. It's an app on their um, device. Um, I was asked earlier this afternoon if parents can download my access onto their personal devices. Um, I'm going to check into that. I have it on my personal device, um, but I need to check to see um, if that's a, an app that the community can download and log into that way. So um, you, Canvas has an app. Mac and Via has an app and Sora has an app. So the three things that I'm going to specifically highlight tonight, there are apps that you can download to your device, um, but I am going to check to see about downloading the My Access to your personal devices. Otherwise, it's on the student's APS device already. Good question. And if you have questions, please ask them along the way. I'd much rather you be able to ask when we're doing the thing that you have a question about um, instead of um, a little bit later. We have one more question on that. Okay. Note. Does a first grader have that on their Lexia? So Lexia is found in Clever. Um, so Clever also is, uh, um, if I go back to, um, this is, so this is my access homepage. And of course, students would have different um, apps here. Um, so but Lexia is through the Clever portal, which is here. And so the library services um, doesn't use Clever. We have BrainPop in Clever, um, but most of our resources are in, in Mac and Via or Canvas. Any other questions? Not at the moment, thanks. All right. Okay, so in Canvas, your students will have um, courses, again, according to their day. Um, secondary students will have more courses. Um, so this is just a demo course. And on the right hand side is where a student would find um, a way to get to um, the, it's called APS Library Services Canvas course. Um, the link happens to not be on here right now. Um, but that link from their classroom Canvas courses would take them here. And they can also log in. They can add this as a course so they don't have to go through a, like a classroom course to get direct to the um, library services resources. So it's HTTPS um, colon forward slash forward slash APSVA.instructure.com forward slash and then enroll forward slash, and the code is LKG3G9. So students can type that in and just add this to their Canvas course. 
And you can see here that we have an elementary section, a middle school section, and a high school section. High school has everything. Middle school has everything but a resource called JSTOR. And then the elementary school students have the fewest um, resources. So I'm going to start here. Now, I want to first talk about books that students can access um, through Canvas. And again, these also live in Mac and Via. Um, my favorite is Sora. And one of the things that I love about um, reading online is that there are audiobooks here. Um, students can use audiobooks, I tell them, maybe when they're doing chores around the house. If their job is to fold laundry or empty the dishwasher, that's a great time to turn on an audiobook and listen for a few minutes. Uh, if they're reading a print book, sometimes students also like to hear the audiobook so they could get the audiobook from here and, and get the print book from their library and listen that way. So um, audiobooks and ebooks are available here. And of course, we know that most students really do prefer checking out print books from their library, um, but this is an additional resource and it, it has been pretty popular. Um, so this is what Sora looks like and uh, everything is in different collections. So if you scroll down, you'll see different collections. And I do want to highlight that because I'm an adult, I have access to everything. So the high school students would have access to everything. But if your child is in kindergarten, they're only going to have access to the things that are for, for elementary school students. So when I'm scrolling through the different resources, you might see content and you're like, oh, I don't know if my child is ready for that. And it might be that they don't have access to it, um, again, depending on their level. Um, a couple of the things that I love about Sora, one is that if I click on the, the menu in the top, I can scroll down and I can change to dyslexic font. I can change the contrast mode and I can select a language. So this would make the, the Sora template language change to the language that, um, that you select. So that may be something that is helpful. Um, another thing in the settings is that you can add, if your child has library cards, um, to other libraries. For example, I have an Arlington Public Library card and I have a Fairfax County Public Library card. So I added those to Sora. So I can um, have simultaneous access to the ebooks and audiobooks that both of those public libraries offer. And I only have to look in the Sora app. I don't have to go different places to do that search. Um, so that makes it looking for ebooks and audiobooks super easy. Um, and then in the filters, there are different filters that you can take a look at, but the one I just wanted to point out specifically is the language filter. Um, so again, if you only wanted to search for books in a, in a certain language, then you could select that language. Um, and then you have to remember that filter is on because um, it will keep looking for books in that language. So I'll just, uh, well, oh, oh, also, Magazines are unlimited um, simultaneous use. So if every student across the district wanted to open up the same article at the same time, we can do that. Um, and you can see, again, there are a lot of different magazines in here and your students would have access to different ones depending on their grade level. But this is the full magazine. If I wanted to open up uh, Cook's Country, for example, um, I could read it just as if, you know, I had it in front of me. It's the the full page layout, not just the individual articles. So I'll just go back and show you what it looks like to open a book. Um, so we'll just do... It looks like we have a lot of new... Um, all access plus plus books. So I'll open this Disney princess. Um, so this is what the page looks like. It gives you some information. It tells you that this is a juvenile book. So this would be available to elementary school students. And then if I wanted to borrow it, I could click borrow here and it would be in on my shelf. So if I go back to my Sora homepage and scroll to the bottom, Sorry, I'm trying to move this book. Then if I look on my shelf at the bottom, I would see that book in my cart if I checked it out. So this is Sora. I think it's a great resource. Um, students find it really easy to use and we are adding to it um, on a regular basis. So 
Um, I see a hand. Yes, that is me, Amy okay. Gina. Um, just to clarify, um, so did you access Sora through that website that you read off earlier? Could so we go, I go ahead. We put that website in the chat. Sure. So this is um, if student this and so students can add this to their um, Canvas course. So I'll go back. Um, so this is the um, APS Library Resource Center Canvas link. So oh, students would be able to add this, yeah, to their, um, so I'll, I'll add this in, but students would add that to have access to this Canvas course. But Sora is an app that they the students could also potentially download onto um, their personal device if their parents gave permission. Perfect, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, so that's one way that we can read books um, online. Another way that we have is through National Geographic. And the thing that I love about National Geographic is that they have their magazines, which are very popular, um, but they also have the Weird But True books, which um, librarians have a really hard time keeping those on the shelves. So students can go here to the National Geographic um, database in Canvas to access the Weird But True books that are available. And of course, there are also other pieces here to support research. Um, another reading resource that we have is called Tumble Books. So at the top, you can change the language in Tumble Books if um, you would like to, uh, if it read this in French or in Spanish. Um, and then I'm just going to open a book so you can see what Tumble Books looks like. It's pretty um, engaging. So I just selected Whoosh. And I'm going to click Read Online. Bonnie Johnson's Super Soaking Stream of Inventions. Written by Chris Barton, illustrated by Dante, narrated by Eric Destin. Every day brought a challenge for young Lonnie Johnson. So all of the books in Tumble Books are actual picture books. And then the Tumble Book Company has animated them so that you can see the things like the shutters swinging. Um, just makes it more engaging and um, the students really love coming to Tumble Books to see what's available. And again, if a whole class wanted to read the same book at the same time, they could do that. If you wanted to search by language in Tumble Books, so this select language would change again what I call the template of the web page into another language. So if I were to click on Spanish, then the um, words on the template would change into Spanish. But if I click on search, I can scroll down and search by language. And this would give me books in Spanish or in the language that I select. So the template is still in English, but the books that are coming up are in Spanish. And they also are read in, in Spanish or the language that you select. So this is Tumble Books. Again, it's a fun resource that students can um, listen to actual print books on. So now I want to share more of the databases and I'm going to get just um, jump over to the high school database list. Um, I'll share um, resources that pre-K students might be interested in all the way up to our students who are preparing to go off for college. Um, so Britannica School is one of the um, databases that we have online, the online encyclopedia. One of the things that I like about Britannica is that you can select the, the amount of content or the access level that you want. So I'm just going to click on middle. And if I search for electricity,
I get different articles that come up. So usually we tell the students, the first one is usually the, the best one, not always. Um, but for right now, we do want to know more about electricity. So if I scroll down, I just wanted to highlight that there is a translate feature. Um, this is a like a Google Translate function. So we know it is at 100%, but it is helpful if that is something that a student would benefit from. Um, there is a listen feature. Introduction. Electricity is a form of energy associated with the... And then there's an option to make the fonts larger or smaller. So these are just a few things that might be helpful as students use this tool um, in researching different um, topics. So that's Britannica. There is also the Britannica in Spanish specifically. So if I were to search for electricity, Oh, and I spelled it incorrectly. So that is one thing that we have to be careful of is that it doesn't always um, do, do like a, did you mean? Um, but I, I did want electricity. So um, the, the whole web page is in Spanish. Another resource that um, is very helpful, and elementary students use this primarily, but I have also used this with my middle school students and with high school students. So I don't, there isn't really a resource that is um, like only for elementary, but they can, um, users, students across all ages can use um, all of the resources that they have access to. So Pebble Go, I like it because it comes up automatically in Spanish or in English. So you click on the um, resource that you want, or you can type in the search box at the top. Everything that you hover over will be read to you. So I'm gonna click in biographies and go to astronauts. And it's, for some reason, it isn't reading tonight. I'm not sure why, but it does. James A. Lovell. There we go. Um, so everything is read to students, which can be very helpful. And then as you heard, sometimes all the people, all the things get read at once. So you have, this is a, a good practice in fine motor skills and, and slow um, moving the mouse. Um, so you don't get all those at once. But this is an actual print book online. And each one of these tabs is a real page in the actual print book. Um, so if I go back to the introduction, you'll see that this can be read aloud. Ellen Ochoa is a pioneering Latina astronaut. So um, you can find out more about her. And then at the bottom of the screen, there's usually a um, video that you can play. So that's um, engaging. Doctor. And then um, maybe watch her video at a different time. Um, with the animals, the students really like the animals because students love animals, um, but also with the animals, they can hear the animals make that sound that they make if the animals have a sound. So like fish, there's no sound for fish. Um, students often ask me, where is the sound for dinosaurs? Well, we didn't happen to be around to capture that, but um, we do get to hear lots of lions and other animals. So that's pretty awesome. So birds, um, songbirds. Pebble Go is just a great resource to come to and learn more about. And, and this is a resource that I um, would sometimes use as when my student, when my children, my personal children were younger, if I needed like 10 minutes to do something, I could um, give them Pebble Go and know that they were learning, they were engaged, and I could do the thing that I needed to do for those 10 minutes as a parent. So that's Pebble Go. So we have World Book, which is another encyclopedia. And when you click on World Book, um, you, all, you see that it also has the different um, groupings for depending on um, how advanced you want the content to be. And in World Book, it also has a specific encyclopedia in Spanish. And I don't want to translate. Um, so this is here for students. And if I go back to World Book, I'm just going to click on Advanced. And if I search for electricity,
Again, um, usually the first choice is the best choice, but not always. And then in World Book, if I scroll down, you'll see that there is also the read to feature um, so that this that students can engage with this in the in the audio version. So that's World Book. So JSTOR is the next resource I wanted to share, and it is only available at the um, high school level. And mostly the um, users of this resource are students who are in classes uh, like AP, IB, the advanced level courses, um, getting ready to head off to college. Again, all high school students can use it, um, but that's the primary user. And so this is a great a great way um, to find current research. So if I typed in electricity, um, and you can see this has journal articles, it has chapters from books in here. Um, so the students can uh, access this information in JSTOR. And then we have a lot of resources from GAL. So I'm gonna go down to GAL and science since we're on the electricity theme. And if I type in electricity here, um, the one thing that I like about GAL and all of the different resources that they have is that they tell you, okay, we have one reference, which is probably an encyclopedia article. I think I spelled it wrong, which is why I'm not very good at typing and talking at the same time. Um, so that's why this is a little bit more limited than it would be had I spelled it correctly. Um, but there are 12 journal articles, one image, three magazines. So I'm just going to click on the journal articles that came up. And um, so a few things about Gale is that you can search by Lexile. So if you know your Lexile, you can search by that. Um, and this one, it says it has a 1600 Lexile. There are 6,400 words, and this is from 2022. So I feel like this is a current article that I would like to open. And if I scroll just a little bit, I just wanted to share some features with you. So again, there is a translate feature in um, the Gale resources. I can decrease the font size. I can increase the font size. But when I click on the A, uppercase A and lowercase A, I can change the backgrounds. I can change the font. And I can change the letter spacing. So there is a lot of opportunity here for students to create um, a path for reading that's best for them on the web page. So that's that's one of my favorite things about Gale is that it that it allows you to differentiate to um, suit your reading style or needs best. Culturegrams is um, a great resource also for researching. It has information for states, provinces, and then countries around the world. So I'm going to click on Kids Edition. This is information about place uh, countries around the world. The World Edition um, is also about countries around the world, but it is, again, at a more advanced level. So when I click on Kids Edition, you can type up in the um, search bar the place that you want to look for, or you can just click on the map. I like visiting North, um, Costa Rica, so I'm going to click on North America. And then I'm going to just um, scroll down and head to Costa Rica. And just like that, I'm there. Um, on the left-hand side, there is um, kind of like a table of contents that you can click on different um, things. If I want to know more about the food in Costa Rica, then I could click on this. And then here is a, an article. And then usually there's like a recipe that comes along with it. Um, and if I wanted to hear like the country's national anthem, then that could that's here as well. So this is just a great place to learn about um, different states, provinces, and countries around the world. Um, all right here in the little in the little database called Culturegrams. So those were the databases that I had highlighted to share with you. What questions might you have about the the databases?
nothing in the chat at the moment. Okay. So I do want to go back to um, some partnership that the Parent Resource Center and I have done, which is the library um, in the Parent Resource Center. It, um, can I just go to APS? And then, um, so I'm at the APS homepage. I'm going to click on Family and Community. And then the second option is the Parent Resource Center. And you can see here's a little snippet of their beautiful space and a few of the books. And along this wall, there are a lot more books that parents and caregivers can check out. So I just wanted to share with you the process on how to do that. So from the web page, I'm going to scroll down to the bullet point that says a lending library containing books, DVDs, and audiobooks. So if I click on that. There is information here on how to um, email prc at apsva.us to get your name entered into um, the account so that you can check out. Um, we're happy to add parents, but we don't add everybody automatically. But anytime that you ask, um, we, we can get you added. And then up here, it says access our collection. And this is where you would search for a topic that um, is of interest to you. And all of these titles are focused around parenting. So this is taking a second to come up. But there are different topics here. And when you um, are searching here, if you feel like there's something that we might be missing, then you could also email that same um, email address and ask if we might be able to add some content on a certain topic, we'd be happy to do that. So I'm going to scroll back to the top and you can see. Okay, um, so we have popular titles. Um, and it's I'm glad to see that some books are out. That means our, our um, families are connecting with some of these resources. So if there's something that you want, again, this is um, for parents to use. And we can get these, some of the books are digital, so you could read them straight from your device. Others are actual print books, so we could get those to you um, either by you coming by SciFax to pick it up, or we could send it to your child um, and they could bring it home from school. So this is um, just uh, another way that the Parent Resource Center is supporting parents on this parenting journey. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I think I've shared everything that I had outlined to share. I know that's a lot of information all at once. And um, potentially you might be able to work with your child to look at some of the resources that you have, um, that they have available. So you can dig a little deeper into what's available for them. If you have any questions about anything that you heard tonight, your best resource is your school's librarian. You can always reach out to them to ask for help. Um, your child will be familiar with who their librarian is, so they can um, help you with that. And uh, we do hope that our resources, thankfully, are well used, but we do um, hope that you will also uh, spend a little time using them because we feel like we have a lot of great things here to, to offer. Great. Okay, I don't see... Um... Any additional questions in the chat? Um, Gina, do we see any hands up? Does anybody have any questions? We'd love to answer anything we can help you with. Yep, jump on in. You can unmute your microphone at this point. <clears throat> and I agree with Cam, awesome materials. We are so fortunate um, to have all these great resources for students and also for families. And as I said, Amy's been a wonderful, um, a wonderful friend to the Parent Resource Center, but also I think a great steward of library resources for all of our school's libraries. So I just dropped the link in the chat for your student to be able to put this in their in Canvas in their in the address bar once they're logged into Canvas, and this will add the library services um, Canvas course to their Canvas page. 
All righty. Well, we're so glad you could all join us tonight. And as I mentioned in the chat, we'll go ahead and send the recording out to you so that you can maybe follow along and look at this again. I know sometimes I like to do that, but I will um, get ready to stop the recording. And thank you again, Amy, for all this wonderful information. Thank you so much. Great job.